Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Stefan de Kruuk. And you'll see in Photopia, I have already opened up this photograph of myself. And the first thing I'm going to do is lower the opacity to something around 70% so that I can see what I'm working on on top. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the um, pen tool with no fill and a black stroke and about 4.4 point. And I'm going to use this tool to begin dividing up my face, my portrait, into um, parts. Okay, first thing I'm doing is just going around the top of the head. And this is going to give me some points that I can then work from as I begin to divide up the inside of the face and around my features and things like that. Once I'm done with each line, I like to right click and rasterize that line. Otherwise, I find that the pen tool continues the line and I can't start a new one easily. Um, I also will need the whole thing rasterized at the end anyway. So this just makes life a little easier. Every time I'm done with a particular bit, I just right click on that layer and rasterize it. Okay, how you divide up the face is completely up to you, but I would very much um, advise you to have some of the artist's work in front of you so you can see what he's done and you can see where the portraits that he's done have been divided up. Um, to make a nice, um, aesthetically pleasing uh, design. Um, but it is very much about just doing this across the entirety of your face and head, um, trying to work out where you can see um, features on the face and forms and shapes and kind of using those to help you to decide where you want to have particular sections. So you can see that I've kind of gone around the bottom of my nose, I've gone around the bridge of my nose, I've chosen to go around my the socket of my eye. Um, and once you've got those features in, then you've got the opportunity to work from those towards that outer line um, to begin to divide up the rest of your head um, in any way you kind of see fit. As I say, there's no real rule to this, particularly, you know, as the photo you use may not be posed in the same way that I am here. And you'll see from the artist's pieces that they are, you know, from people in different poses. Okay. Right, well, I'm not going to bore you anymore with me dividing my face up. You know what you need to do to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut forward to a point where I have finished. Okay, so here I am having done all the lines on my face that I want to do, and you can see them there. Um, I'll make life easier for you to be able to see them. I'll just make a new layer, bring that down to the bottom and fill that with white. I say easier for you to see, it will be easier for me to be able to work as well. And now I can take away my photo and you can see those lines really easily. I've already merged those lines together and I've collected all these different examples of different old woods. Um, and paint kind of crackling off of wood as well. And what I'm going to do now is choose one of the woods, then use the rectangle select to select a part of it, and then press Control C to copy that bit, and then Control V to paste that into my project. And then I'm just going to use the arrow tool to move that into position over an area that I want to be that particular texture, making sure I get it completely over the whole area. I'm just gonna make that invisible and go back to the line layer and use the magic wand tool to select that area. 
then go back to the layer with the texture on it, go to select inverse, so it selects everything else, and then press delete, and that leaves that area in that texture, okay? So I'm gonna repeat that now, I'm gonna to go to this particular wood, and I'm gonna grab that area with the rectangle select, control C, control V, to paste it in, there it is. It's very small, so let's make that bigger with the arrow tool. And then reposition it. And you'll notice I'm rotating these textures. So they kind of work with the form of the face. So think about that as you're doing it. Okay, same as before, magic wand on the line layer, go back to the wood layer, select inverse and press delete. Okay. Right, I want to use that wood again, so I'm going to press Control V to paste that in again. Use the arrow tool to make it big and rotate a bit again. I'm stretching it a bit this time, just a little bit. Okay, and then placing it there, going back to the line layer, using the magic wand tool to select the area, going back to the wood layer, going select and inverse, and then pressing delete. Okay, and so, He's just going to keep doing that. So another texture here using the rectangle select tool, control C to copy it, control V to paste that in. And then choosing a place where I want it to be, resizing and rotating to make sure I cover the whole area. Then going back to the line layer, getting the magic wand and selecting that area. Going to select, inverse, and then making sure I'm on the wood layer and pressing delete. Okay. And I'm going to use that texture again. So I've pressed control V to paste that in and using the arrow tool to resize that. And then going back to the line layer, using the magic wand to select whichever area it is, going back to the wood layer, pressing select and inverse and pressing delete. Okay. Right. Next up, choosing a nice warm wood color. Rectangle select to select the area, control C to copy it, control V to paste it into my project. There it is. And this time I'm going to use it to cover two areas. So I've made sure it's big enough to cover both areas. And now I'm using the magic wand on the line layer to select those two areas. Remember to press shift as you select multiple areas Then going back to the wood layer, pressing select inverse and then pressing delete. Okay. And then I'm just going to get this nice black wood here. Um, rectangle select, control C, control V to paste it into your project. Move it to where you want it to be. Again, I'm going to do two areas with this. So I'm going to select and press shift and select again with the magic wand. And then I'm going to go back to the wood layer, select inverse and then press delete. OK, and you will just continue to do this until you've filled the whole of your piece of work until it looks something like this. OK, and this is the piece of work pretty much done and dusted. Um, you could leave it like this, or you could, in the style of the artist, um, make it so that it's a standalone piece on a white background. I'll show you what I mean now. I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to click at points where I want to mask off what I'm about to delete. So once I've masked off that whole area, I'm going to go make sure I've selected that layer and press delete. And you'll notice it's gone clear, so I need to add some white. So I'm going to grab a new layer and I'm going to use the paint bucket just to paint bucket that new layer in white like that, there we go. So I've got a nice white background again, and I'm gonna use the 
arrow tool just to resize that so it sits nicely in the center of my project. And that's what I mean by it standing alone, not being at the edges. So it looks more like Stefan de Kroek's work. Okay, and that's this piece done and dusted. I hope you find this tutorial helpful.